speaking of which, here's our project plan. Can't really see it uh, very well from back here, but what we have here is the build phase, and this is the phase we are most uh, worried, uh, worried about. Oh, I lied to you. I'm not doing that in employee management. I'm doing that email notification. So anyways, whenever you build your project plan, um, you're going to notice that you're going to have some dependencies and some durations. And so kind of how you organize your building is based on the dependencies of what needs to be built first. Uh, using the Microsoft Project is a great way to plan this out as well. Uh, but you see here, um, the first thing we need to complete is discovery. And actually, I'll put those as parallels. This should all be shifted over a little bit. Uh, but all the build depends on the design being complete. And so all the build starts right here. And once we get to the build, you see that we have a lot of things that can be developed in parallel, but then a lot of things that have dependencies. And so um, this is where you can have multiple branches in the repository at one time that will need integration, as opposed to having one or two branches that you have to complete before you can go on to the next phase where you can either reuse the same branch or you can create a new branch for it, depending on how you want to organize your project there. So here, uh, with email notification, it and reports can go at the same time. So it would be wise for us to have two teams working, one on the email um, notification and one on the reports. And so therefore, we'd want to keep create two branches since in our architecture back here, those were two disjoint, two non-overlapping components that we could develop in parallel at once. So I'm going to switch over to this view here. I've already set up the repository. This is a working copy of my repository. A working copy is basically on my computer. It's not on the server. So I've checked out the trunk and I've checked out the branches from the repository and I have a, a local working copy here. Um, just as a side note, the local working copy is basically where all the changes are done. You always have a local working copy. So according to my plan, I'm developing these two in parallel and so I've gone ahead and I've created reports and email notification. And they both have, they both were branched off of the trunk, so they have the initial directory structure in here. And whenever I created the trunk, I went ahead and before I created any branches, I not, uh, noticed what organization was I going to have for all my packages. And so I went ahead, actually, I did this in Visual Studio, created the solution, and created all the sub projects and all the subdirectories that go, go in there. Once I had the skeleton of the project done, uh, created and checked into the trunk, with no code, just directory structure and project files. Then I branched off to create my branches. And so we come here to email monitor, it's the same structure. So the tools that we use, Tortoise SVN is what you're gonna be seeing we use at first. Then in Visual Studio, we use Onk SVN. You're not gonna see any of my Eclipse stuff right now. We have a mainly .NET project, so I'm just doing um, Visual Studio. Uh, sorry, Drew and uh, Blaine. Uh, Subclips and subversive. I used to be a subclips fan, but now I think it stinks, and so I like subversive. Uh, you get your choice. Uh, and in Linux, there's there's a couple of GUI tools. That they're all kind of you know hit or miss, uh, but you can never go wrong with the good old SVN client command line tool. So uh, it's a little bit more painful from the start page. So this is a local copy I've checked out, and this is where I'm going to manage my repository locally. So whenever I want to do the merges, I use this directory structure. But from Visual Studio, if you want to check out a project from a repository, you go to File, Open, Subversion Project, and then you're going to go to your, um, you're going to go to your repository here and hit this because you can't see. From Onk SVN, uh, once you get to the repository location, you add a new one here if you don't already have it in your list. Uh, but once you have the directory shown up, you just click on the solutions file, and Onk SVN will take care of um, downloading um, all the related files you need for your project. So this, in this case, we actually check in the project files. In in Java, when you use like NetBeans or Eclipse, I generally don't like to to check in the dot class tech and dot project files because it 
you have different environments set up in different places, and you don't want to tightly bind your your source base to be uh, with one tool or not. But in you know .NET, you pretty much can use Visual Studio unless you're crazy and you're using Mono and all that other all that other stuff. So. so now I've checked it out from the repository. It's actually in a different location. You see, everything is green. Everything's good. So. So here's just a Miller configuration class. It's one of my dependencies in Chart. So uh, we'll add a new one. Edit static string foo. Dollar. We've made a modification to this. There. So within OncSVN, you can see that it n notifies you directly that it's been replaced. So I can go here, and I can commit my code, and I can insert a comment. I was insert a comment. I read foo. And that's just simply how you uh, modify a file and check it out. So this is the easy part of it. So how do we handle multiple developers working in the same space, stepping on each other's feet? So let's let's create a confluent. So now I have a current version here. I want to go and start another instance of Visual Studio. So I throw my system won't crash. And I want to open. Okay. I want to check out some repository same project. Alright, so this is the version I first checked out. I've already committed this file, so the repository has the latest version of this file. Since I just checked this project out, I now have the same copy of that file. So now I'm developing this one. I see that I have retrieved his foo. Now I'm going to add a new method. Response to his stupid method. Oops, him being me. Alright, so within my second working copy, I've made a change. However, I want to come back here and add another method. Now I have just simulated two developers working on the same file, which hopefully you don't have happen often, but it does happen. Uh, if if you are working on two separate components of the same class, or or one's working on one method while another one's working on another method, or uh, Lord forbid you um, you guys are working together, or you forgot to check your code in, one another developer is working on it. Here's how we create a conflict. So they've mo both modified the same version of the file. Uh, my newest copy I'm going to commit, so this would be uh, Sally in our example we had before. Sally in Sally. Alright, so we check that in. What happens if we come back here and we try to check this in? What was his name, Larry? Harry. Now we get a failed. Why did it fail? Because subversion said, uh uh, you're trying to commit your A prime whenever A double prime has already been checked in. So now we have to go back and merge it. Now you can um, do an update here and merge it this way. I'm going to show you OncSVN because I like the way, on, uh, sorry, TortoiseSVN because I like the way TortoiseSVN works uh, better. Uh, and that means I need to go to where this is checked out at. 